got to keep that desk nice and clean, people. Do you regularly clean your studio? I've seen some studios like, full of dust, full of like empty glasses, dirty plates, dusty MIDI keyboards, all that kind of stuff. I feel like I have to, like I'm just way less productive if I have like stuff everywhere. It's just, just gets annoying after a while. Today, we're out making beats as normal. But what I've noticed from some of my live beat critique, well most of them actually, is that when someone submits a beat that they have used a loop with or they've used a sample with, a lot of the guys, especially the guys that are newer to you know beat making and producing, the beats are always out of key and I don't understand how, how that happens. You know, the beat just isn't in key and you can tell immediately, it does, you don't need to know music theory to be able to hear if a beat's out of key. So, so to help you guys out with that, we're making a beat. I'm gonna make a beat and I'm gonna use a loop. I'm just gonna go onto like Looper Man or something and find a loop. I'm gonna walk you through the, my process of using the sample, finding the key of the sample, and then just kind of go through the whole workflow that I do when I you know, use samples and turn them into a full beat. So let's get into it. But before we do, make sure you go ahead and check out the Anubis MIDI kit that I recently dropped. Some really fire MIDI hi-hats in there, quick inspiration, just drag and drop. If there's anything else you need to upgrade on, drum kits, beat selling courses, head over to my website, prodllb.com, and you can go ahead and get everything on there. But yeah, man, let's get into this. All right, so I've got this loop that I pulled from Looper, man. Sounds kind of cool, but I chopped it up a little bit. I slowed it down a bit and it sounds like this now. Okay, edit the RC20, half time. Uh, I might cut out some low end of this as well. It sounds a bit muddy. Yeah, let's get into this loop. So the first thing you want to do is find the key. So for this loop, you can tell that there's different chords within this in this loop. So I'm going to find those first. That way when I'm adding counter melodies, 808s, eight, then it's going to be like way easier for me to keep a clean workflow. And what I'm going to do first is just add FL keys and then I'm just going to find a key in the piano roll with FL keys just to make sure that nothing is out of key. So to make sure that before you do this though that the producer that's uploaded this to Looper Man or wherever you're finding your loops from hasn't already labeled this. If they have labeled it then it's going to make life a lot easier. But if they haven't then do this strategy. See I'm just going to go into a high key and then just find the key of this beat, so. Sounds about right. I've got my, I've got the, I've got the key, and I know what the chord progression is like. So it goes from A minor, E minor, uh, G major, I think, or G minor, one of the two. But yeah, that's it. So you don't need to know music theory to know to know that. Just pull up FL keys, play with the keys until you find the right key. Yeah, I'm just gonna copy that over. And I'm just gonna put it into an empty sampler. Now I've got the ghost notes turned on. Any time that I go into like another piano roll, look, I can see all the keys right here. And I know that it's in A minor, so you could also just go in, go into the helpers, scale highlighting, and I know that we're in A. So I'm gonna come to A right here. And then we're good. Okay, so all of these like notes are within the right scale. So now I cannot go out of scale with this loop. And then after that, it's just going in and just adding some layers, man. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cook up the rest of this loop. Trust me, doing those two steps first will save you a lot of time. Just, I know the struggle if you don't have the music theory knowledge. But yeah, man, I'm gonna go in and start doing some stuff. Some flute phrases. <laughs> Okay, let's just go add some reverb. Okay, expand, that's some kind of one shot. I'm 
and have them hit like not very often. You know, just try and keep it off balance a bit. What I like to do with these one shots is add to like two is add two lots of delay. Pan one to the left, one to the right, and then you know just kind of just play with the bounce and, and turn them way down. I've got two delays right here. So one to the left, one to the right. I'm gonna put one at like a two step because it's quite a slow beat. And then the other at four step. Turn it down. I think last thing for this, I want this to be like a real simple beat, you know, hard drums. So last thing I want to add in is just a little vocal chop, distant voices or something. Nice. I think one thing I'm gonna add now is just like some kind of texture. I'm gonna come into I'm just gonna come into expand. Expand have actually got some pretty nice ambiences and like you know texture, so let's take a listen to some. Mm, sounds a little bit off. Yeah, that could work. I'm gonna make it like way in the background though. Don't want it to. Too, don't want it to be like too prominent. Cool. All right. One thing that I wanted to point out, just to you know, give you guys some like insight, is like don't worry too much about adding tons of layers. Like with this beat, it's pretty simple. You know, that guitar loop is like the chord progression and like the main melody that's gonna run throughout the whole thing. And then after that, it's just about adding those little bits of ear candy. But the key thing is you, you don't want to take up like tons of space, especially if you're sending them out. But yeah, man, I've got the loop right here now. I'm going to just save this i'm going to start a new project and then just going to work with this loop so i'm just going to get a quick bounce going first of all let's start with this one see what it sounds like i'm going to try something a bit different with this beat let's get a clapping hi-hat Let's just get a quick bounce, go into the Anubis kit, give it a bit of variation. That's better. Alright, let's go in with like an open hat. Let's have a look at the Hero kit. Yeah, that's gotta be the one. Give that eight to eight more punch. Boost it. Rim shot. simple okay cool now what i'm going to do now is just put this into a beat so just we've got the beat we've got the drum loop all i want to do now is just add the variation the easiest way that i found to add the variation especially with the drums is just do this so get your drum loop that i've got right here duplicate it across the whole beat like i've done right here just put a few more in like that and then just listen to the beat and then as the beat sort of progresses then you just go in and then make a pattern unique add some changes take some stuff out and go from there so i know for definite i don't want to have anything playing at the beginning just want to have it like this. Drums come in. And cut it right there. And we're back to the beginning. And that's it. So this section right here, all of these chops and stuff that I've made, that's just going to loop again. So I'm just going to pull this across like that. Pull this across again. 
and we don't need that right there. And then I'll just fade the beat out right here. At the end, create automation. Just turn this down. So it doesn't have to be like crazy complicated. Once you've got the loop, find the keys, make sure everything's in key, get the bass in key. But key thing's real simple. Like with the hi-hats, it's not that crazy. The melody wasn't that crazy, like all the layers that I add to it. It's just about, you know, finding that initial balance. As soon as you're happy with it, stop there. Honestly, I think the sort of pitfall that a lot of producers fall into, especially in the beginning, is kind of one, is wanting to fill out the whole beat. I know it's, it's so tempting and I used to make the same mistake. Stop when you're happy. As soon as you're happy, stop. Yeah, man, I hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure that you go ahead and subscribe. I want to try and hit 20K by Christmas or by the end of the year. So like 31st of December. But yeah, man, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.